Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 534. Painful intercourse is a common problem for women. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Today we're going to talk about painful intercourse, and I think that this is a problem for more of you than who actually admit it, especially to your partner, because you don't want to tell them, oh, that hurts, I don't want to have sex. So I would like to talk about how to figure out what's causing painful intercourse and how to fix it. This may not be your problem, but I think it would be helpful for you to understand the problems that other people's, people have and why they may be um, putting off intercourse or not having intercourse uh, and not talking about why they don't have intercourse. So in my office at uh, BioBalance Health, um, we talk about sex a lot because we replace the hormones uh, that actually make sex, sex possible, which are testosterone and estrogen. So we're always asking, how's your libido? Do you have a sex drive? Um, are you able to have an orgasm? How's your, how does sex feel? Does it cause pain? And we get a lot of people who do have pain on intercourse, especially before they're treated with their hormones. So this morning, I'd like to talk about not the psychological problems of painful intercourse, because there are some that can cause psychological and, and actual physical pain just from uh, having had abuse or other issues in your life that need to be taken care of by a counselor. I, I'm not going to talk about couple issues also, which are supposed to be taken care of by a counselor, but, but most sexual pain is caused by a physical problem. It can either be a hormonal problem or it can be a, a, an anatomy problem where there's something wrong inside the pelvis that needs to be diagnosed and treated before sex can be uh, actually comfortable. And, and if sex isn't comfortable, you're not going to have an orgasm. You're not going to enjoy it. You're going to eventually not have sex because you're. it's like touching a hot stove. You stop touching the hot stove after a while. And it can be severe. I mean, it can be so bad it can feel like appendicitis to have um, uh, pain on intercourse if it is that deep pain. So I'm going to divide divide up pain on pain with intercourse on pain on insertion of the penis and pain on deep thrust, because those are two separate issues. Basically, hormones come into play on the, on the pain on uh, insertion of the penis. I know I hate to say this all clinically, kind of takes the fun out of it, doesn't it? Um, but but the, I call it superficial pain. So pain on insertion of the penis basically is a problem of hormones in general. It is uh, it cause, you have pain because you don't have enough estrogen and you don't have enough testosterone. Now, in menopause, that's what happens. You lose your estrogen, you lose your testosterone, and my typical patient will come in saying, I'm having hot flashes, I don't have a, a sex drive, and I have painful intercourse um, upon insertion. So what, what is that? So how does that work? Uh, estrogen is the hormone that gives you blood flow to the pelvis, some of the blood flow to the pelvis. It also causes the vagina to be stretchy, and it causes the vagina to be wet. Those are very important things for having sex. And if you are dry and your vagina has shrunk like it does over time without estrogen in your body, then you're, going, you're not going to be able to fit a penis in the vagina because it won't stretch, and you can get tears around the opening of the vagina. Um, they look like just just like you took a piece of material and, and pulled it until it ripped. And, and it's very painful to have that happen. And even afterwards, it burns every time um, my patient will urinate because there's little cuts everywhere. 
So estrogen is vital to having um, comfortable intercourse. Testosterone may be even more vital. It's more vital to actually having an orgasm, and it's more vital to having normal intercourse because testosterone also brings some blood flow to the pelvis, but it also thickens the skin around the vagina and all over the, bo all over the bottom from the mons, which is the mons pubis, which is the hairy area, or if you don't shave, the hairy area above the clitoris all the way down to the rectum. So that area, that skin is thickened by testosterone. When women don't have testosterone, it gets very thin and fragile, sometimes so much so that you can get like bed sores or sores on your bottom from just it being so thin that when you sit, the friction causes sores. So it's very important for that reason. Testosterone is important for um, bringing blood flow to the clitoris. When I look at what I call old lady bottom, because, you know, now I'm an old lady, but I mean, I don't have a lack of hormone. But when I used to be a gynecologist and would look at people who were menopausal and didn't take hormones, didn't take testosterone, they would, their clitoris, you couldn't even find it. It was so tiny and it was so far behind the hood of the clitoris that it was, it was not uh, able to be stimulated during sex. So that takes away so the most common reason or, or most common source of orgasms. If you can't have the clitoris stimulated because it's so small, there's no blood flow to it. The nerves have, have, um, are numb. And so without testosterone, all of these things happen and it makes it impossible to have comfortable intercourse. Testosterone also uh, lengthens the vagina. It helps the vagina get become longer, especially under uh, sexual stimulation. It thickens the, the skin of the vagina and makes it stretchier. So in general, you have to have both estradiol and testosterone to have comfortable intercourse. If it is a problem of the skin is thin and it it tears or it's painful on insertion of the of the penis or if it feels like sandpaper afterwards and you have to go sit in the bathtub with hot water because it burns so much afterwards because the skin of the vagina is so thin or it doesn't stretch very well so those are the reasons that are hormonal and that I can fix by just replacing the hormones for my patients. And it's very effective. And I'm, I, I have to tell you that this is such a big part of m many people's lives that they don't even, they don't talk about it. They don't, they're afraid to talk about it to their doctors because a lot of doctors say, why are you still having sex when you're 60? Which is ridiculous. We should be able to have sex our whole lives. So, I mean, that, that should be a normal thing for people throughout. If they can have sex, then that's, that should be part of their healthy lives. The next type of pain um, came to me <laughs> came to me um, as a subject to be discussed when I had a patient this week who was lovely and had um, not had hormones. She was in her sixties. She hadn't had hormones for a very long time. She was um, divorced and now had um, a love interest, and she wanted to have sex, but. She couldn't even think about it because the vagina was so small, it would only admit one finger and barely that. And she was so tender, uh, it, her vagina didn't, didn't stretch, and the skin was so thin, and her libido was nothing. She, she just didn't, she knew she should have sex because that was part of the relationship she was developing, but she didn't really feel like it or have the drive for it. So she, when she came to me, that was her primary issue. She came back after four months of having testosterone and estrogen. Her drive was great. She didn't have any pain on insertion of the penis. Everything there was great. She had wetness. She had stretchiness. She didn't have any tearing. She didn't have any pain on insertion like she had before. However, on deep thrust, which is the second kind of pain that a woman can have, when the, the penis is already inserted and pushing against the cervix or up close to the cervix, she had terrific pain, and she was unable to continue to have sex because of that. So she, luckily, she had a very cooperative partner. They tried every position. They found one position, side-by-side -side kind of position, kind of, I don't have a name for it, but they're both lying on their back side-to-side, -side, and that didn't hurt. 
So that's the position that they, they favored. But she told me about this, and I wanted to know why she had it. Not just how to fix it, but why does she have it? So we went through her history of her periods way back when, and when she was having periods, she had terrible periods, terrible pain, heavy bleeding, all the symptoms of uh, endometriosis, but she wasn't diagnosed with that. It went away, interestingly enough, when she was placed on the birth control pill, which sometimes endometriosis does go away. But before that, she had these periods which, let me discuss endometriosis for a minute. Endometriosis is a condition where you have these little tiny implants all throughout your abdomen, not inside your uterus, but outside your uterus, around your ovaries, around your tubes, on your on, sometimes on the bowel, sometimes on the liver, little implants that are actually tissue just like the tissue inside your uterus. And every month when you have a period, they bleed. And so your belly feels like you have appendicitis or you have a cyst that's bleeding into your abdomen. It's terrific acute pain, and it lasts for the whole period. Sometimes it's even before the period. So that's what endometriosis is, and that's what I thought maybe she had had in the past. No way to diagnose that, no way to figure it out. Uh, but I, th I mean, you can figure it out by doing a sur surgery, but I didn't have any way of figuring it out at that very minute. So I put that into my memory, and then I continued to ask her questions. Well, I think what is possible, she had a retroflex uterus, the uterus on ultrasound that I require before I see my patients, showed a normal size uterus, but it was folded back on itself. So back means um, posteriorly between the, between the vagina and the rectum, the uterus was turned backwards. So sometimes a penis will hit the top of the uterus and that hurts because it's folded back on itself. So it could have been that, but in general, when people who have normal uteruses that are retroflex, they usually will straighten up a little bit during intercourse and save them the pain so they don't have pain with it. And then they'll go back to being retroflexed after uh, the stimulation is gone. So this did not happen for her. If I believe that her uterus stayed in that area behind her cervix, between the cervix and the rectum, and it was being battered, so to speak, by the, by the penis, and it was causing her a lot of pain. Now, why would that be? Well, I think my, my working uh, diagnosis on her is that she had endometriosis that caused scarring inside her abdomen. And it scarred her uterus in, in a retroflex position, so it can't move. And when you have um, intercourse, your uterus should be able to move up and down, side to side, freely. That's what it was, how it was built. But if you have scarring, it sticks so it can't move. It's like cobwebs attached to your bowel or attached to the sides of your pelvis, which look kind of like a, a bucket or a, a vase that goes like this. And there's little cobwebs between the uterus and there. And every time it moves, it pulls and it hurts. So that is what adhesions do to cause painful period, or pa excuse me, painful intercourse. So endometriosis can cause it all by itself, can cause painful intercourse, or scar tissue from endometriosis in the past can cause it. Infections in your pelvis or in your abdomen that maybe an appendicitis could have caused scar tissue or bowel surgery or some other surgery in your abdomen can cause scar tissue, even C-sections can cause it. So that's one of my, my working theories on her problem. And then she didn't have this because I already saw her ultrasound, but fibroids can cause, cause pain. They're, they're, a, they're a mass that fill up the uterus and make it very large. And so when it's large, it doesn't move very well. And so it's once again, it's the penis hitting a wall and that hurts. So fibroids can cause it. You can have an ovarian cyst that is sitting next to the uterus, and instead of hitting the uterus with intercourse, it's pushing on the ovarian cyst, and that can cause terrible pain as well. An enlarged ovary and ovarian mass can cause it as well, but she had had an ultrasound three months before, so I doubt any of those things that were not seen on her other ultrasound would be the cause. I'm down to adhesions, retroflex uterus, and 
and a history of probable endometriosis. So what do I do? I'm not doing surgery anymore. I don't, I don't uh, have the ability to fix this part. She was very thankful she had her sex drive back and that she could have sex in one position. But I, th I think that it would be best if she would see a gynecologist, so I sent her to a, a good gynecologic surgeon who could do a scope and look in and see if there were adhesions, clip them if possible, fix it, and I don't think she has an active endometriosis because that rarely happens after menopause. But I fix the hormones and have her fix um, this patient's particular problem with the uterus itself. I mean, it's possible that nothing's going to make this better without taking the uterus out. And I told her that. It could be a major surgery, but that's her choice. If it's not something that's, that's dangerous that will um, cause her harm in the future, like Adhesions shouldn't cause her harm in the future. Um, it just makes gives her pain. Then it may be something that doesn't need to be fixed unless she wants to take uh, the risk of having a hysterectomy or some other major surgery, laparoscopes or one-day surgery. You go home afterwards. But in general, usually. Uh, so take, having a major surgery is a different, a different kind of uh, choice. That's her choice pain or having a surgery, which of course is going to give her some pain as she recovers. So, so that's what I left her with to think about. I decided that estrogen can make the uterus enlarge. So I took, a, I, I decided not to give her estrogen this time and just give her testosterone. She'll still be, um, her, the, her bottom will still be estrogenized for the next four months. It won't go back to what it was uh, quickly. So I think that this test that can tell us how we can, um, if estrogen is really causing the problem or not. So I'm, I'm actually doing a test of treating her with just testosterone and not estrogen. Gives her her sex drive, keeps her bottom uh, essentially wet and stretchy because of the testosterone. But we've taken away estrogen to see if that's the culprit. And we're sent, I'm sending her to a gynecologist to have a complete physical exam and possibly a laparoscope. So that's a normal kind of treatment plan for somebody who has painful intercourse. Sometimes it's easier than this. Sometimes when we do an ultrasound or a physical exam, we feel, feel a big ovary or we feel a big uterus. That's it. That's the problem. And the patient needs surgery. Sometimes we find absolutely nothing and... Um, then it's a matter of trying to get in the right positions during sex so you can avoid having pain. But I'll, I will reassure you the first thing to do is to get your hormones back so that you can see if that's the issue. Usually, estrogen and testosterone replacement, especially with pellets, will make your sex drive come back, will bring your bottom back to normal, and the only side effect of testosterone is facial hair and acne, and we treat that with spironolactone. The only side effect of estrogen is that it can make the uterus slightly larger and more vascular, and it can make the lining of the uterus thicker. We give progesterone, pure progesterone, to counteract the thickness of the uterus so our patients don't bleed. So there's ways around the few side effects that hormones cause, and the benefit is Huge. So at Biobalance, we are interested in your sex life. If it is, if it is good or if it is not good, we take the steps that are necessary that we can that we can provide hormonal, hormonally, or um, or suggest different positions that will not cause deep thrust to cause pain. Or we will send you to the to the expert who can fix that. And that's what you should expect when you go to the gynecologist and you say, I have pain when I have sex. They'll say, is it when on entry or is it at deep thrust? And then they'll divide in their head what's wrong. So um, they should check your hormones. And I, I want to reassure the people that are premenopausal that if you have painful intercourse on in initial insertion, it's probably from low estrogen levels or low testosterone levels or both. And that's very common in these low-dose birth control pills that we have. So you may want to switch your birth control pill out or go to a NuvaRing, which has 
has actual better estrogen for the vagina and thickens the vagina better than uh, low dose pills. So those are my suggestions and my treatment plan and how I deal with uh, dyspnea, also called painful intercourse. I hope you learned something from this. Come back next week and we'll talk again. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.